Hey there, are you not tired of all your action cameras floating around all over your desk? What if you had a little cradle for them to uh, keep them all like in order and that they don't fall over? So I 3D printed this. Look at this, it's a very basic little block with the um, pockets in there where you can put your camera in there. Here's the one here, the 10, um, 9. Why didn't I make it longer? Because my 3D printer can only print a certain size. And uh, so this is as long as I can go. So I just made two. You know, here's the eight. The action. Two action one. Like, look at that. So now they can't fall over. And they are fixed on my table. This video, with this video, I will show you how to make the model for something in a CAD program um, if it's not available on online somewhere. So oftentimes those models are available online. I can show you here an example. Uh, it's called Thingiverse. There's a bunch of models in there. There's a bunch of websites that give you free models or models where you pay a small amount for to get them. And if that is all too much for you or you don't like that kind of thing, then uh, you can make your own. Obviously, you just have to know how to use a 3D CAD program. And that's what this little video is about for an absolute beginner to see how this is done. This very simple model here. And uh, maybe that will help you out. So we are ready to record this. Okay, if you want to make your own model for your 3D printer, I am going to show you how this works quick. Um, this is the software FreeCAD version 0 0.20.2. .2. That's where I show this on the Mac. You can see here on the Apple logo. This one is on the Mac, but it works as well as PC and other computers. Um, so we are building a tray where we can uh, insert three GoPro cameras so that they don't fall over when you keep them on your desk or whatever. Uh, let's start with a new document. That's how this starts on this program. Um, we want uh, to create a body. Uh, now, keep in mind when you do a new document, you have to go up here and select what workbench you want. And in this case, uh, the workbench is a part design, right? We do uh, creating a part part design, right? That's what we want. And then uh, in this new uh, document here, what we created, we create a body. It's called body. And in this body, we create a sketch. A sketch is where we put the drawing of what we want to make. Okay, so this has planes, right? So those X, Y, X, Z and Y, Z planes are basically like the walls in your room. And the X, Y is the floor basically. Okay, so now we're looking up from top. Let's say you look onto the floor and on the floor you draw your object. Uh, our tray will be a rectangular shape here. There's a rectangle. You click on it, move it over to uh, the second point, click again. Now your tool is still active. You can see the triangle tool on my cursor. Right click and it turns off. All right, so now we have a rectangle here. And this rectangle, we need to restrain the length of the sides of it. So here on the top, this one, I want to restrain it in a horizontal uh, 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 direction uh, to 120 millimeters. Okay, so now this thing will be 120 millimeters long. The uh, vertical here, this one, the vertical restraint, I want this thing to be 80 millimeters long. Okay, so I don't know why I pick 80. Do I need 80? I can uh, use my uh, little ruler I have here and uh, say, oh no, uh, 70 millimeters would be long enough for this. So uh, 
able to fit it in there. So I can uh, double click on here and then change this to 70 millimeters. And now my whole drawing changes to 70. If I can't see my drawing because it's out of, like I can move my object in here. And if I don't want that, I can click this button here that fits the object I have on the screen to the view. So now everything fits in my view, okay? Good. So since I can move my rectangle around and I don't want that, I want to lock this in place. And I want to lock this little corner here. I clicked on it, it's green now, to the center of my little universe here. It also turns green. And then I go here to the very left here, this one here, a coincident constraint, right? That locks it in here. And now everything turns green and that means the software is happy because everything is constrained. Okay, we are done with the contour of our object. Oh, let's put it again, fit to the screen. Now we need to make the object, um, we need the thickness of it, right? There is a padding tool here, it's called a pad. You click on that and it makes it automatically to 10 millimeters thick. We don't need 10, we want 30 or more. 40, 30? What do we pick? Now, with 3D printing, the more volume your object has, the longer it takes to print. So uh, while I may like 40, uh, I'm with 30, I'm faster in printing and I have less material. Uh, let's go to 25 as a good alternative. 25 millimeters thickness. Look at this now. So now we have a block basically, and in this block we want to cut holes in their pockets where we can insert our camera, okay? Now we need a new sketch for those pockets, okay? We need this on this surface, so I click on there once, now it turns green, that surface, and I click here on the new sketch. There we are, sketch, on here. So I can put my uh, pockets in here, I need three pockets. Uh, rectangular pockets, okay? So uh, one, two, three. Right click, disable the tool. Now we need to put restraints on our pockets, okay? Um, out of the top of my head, how uh, large is my pocket? I take my little ruler again here on the uh, GoPro and measure that the GoPro is has a 50 millimeter a size, so we do 50 millimeters here. Yeah. That's good, 50 millimeters. And by oh, 28 millimeters, 50 by 28 millimeters. So that's how we want to restrain this. So let's put this here. Command, command. Oh no, we need to do this one by one here. 28 millimeters. Okay. So what you can do is you can click the constraint here and then click on here and say 28 millimeters. Click on here and say 28 millimeters. So now they're all 28 millimeters wide. Then we go to the horizontal. Here and there I said we want 50 millimeters. 50. And here 50. Okay, so now we have uh, three rectangles here that can hold uh, the cameras and we need to make those into pockets. But now they are all over the place. We need to make sure that between those pockets is 10 millimeter space for the lens. Okay, here they are. Let's say those are 10 millimeters apart from each other. And the same here between this one and this one we want a mandatory distance of 10 millimeters. Now, as you remember, uh, we want 120 meter millimeters of the whole thing. Let me grab a calculator. We have 120 millimeters for the whole thing. Uh, minus 28 for the first pocket, minus 28 for the second pocket, minus 28 for the third pocket, leaves us with 36 millimeters. Oh no, we have 10 millimeters. <laughs> Come on, 
and we're going to start over. We have three times 28 millimeters. This is uh, 84. We have plus 10 millimeters, plus 10 millimeters. It's 100 for, for those, for the distance between the two. Okay, and then we do minus 120. That is our whole thing long. So we have 16 millimeters left here for this side here and here. So eight millimeters on each side, right? So we want from here to here a distance of eight millimeter. That makes all this center. Now you see those uh, rectangles. I can still move them up and down. We want them all in one line, right? So let's take this point, this point, and this point and make them all in one line here. Okay, now we need to figure out how far we have this uh, from this side to the pocket or from this side here to the pocket. How far is this? We have 50, the whole thing was 70, so 20 millimeters, the 10 here and 10 there. So from this point to this point, it's also 10 millimeters. Right? And now you see that all those drawings turned green. That means <coughs> the software is happy with the constraint we applied. And so it knows now where to put every single point. We are lucky that those drawings are selected right now. That's why they are green. And we want to make pockets out of them. And then we can push the, just simply the pocket button here. Yeah? And it makes us five millimeter pockets. Now, since we are 25 millimeter thick on this whole thing, we only want a two millimeter bottom in this. We need 25 minus two, so 23 millimeters of pocket depth. So now it goes 23 millimeters in there. All right, okay. Now we need to select the edges of our pockets. So whenever you select something that turns green, now I have the surface selected, I didn't want to click on it again. Okay, so I'm going to carefully uh, select now all those sides, and then I can chamfer them here with the chamfer tool. There, see that? It does a one millimeter chamfer. chamfer. Yeah, I don't want more. One millimeter is good. So when you insert the, your camera here, it does slide in good. Now, uh, we love those sharp edges here on this whole object. We need to round those edges. So all the edges I want to round, I select here. Oh, oh. See, I clicked uh, next to the object. And that deselected everything. So all the edges are selected. The, the edges I want to round, right? So here I take the fillet, fillet on the edge here. Why does it not let me? Oh. I have to go here and okay. See, that was my mistake. Let's get this partner in action there. So I had to close as I put the pockets in or the uh, billets, I have to uh, close the whole thing. So now I can finally select my edges again. I'm sorry that I have to do this twice here and that you have to wait for it. Okay, so, but uh, this is what you do when you make those things. Mistakes are being made. <laughs> yeah. So now I have them all in order. I'm not good with my mouse turning stuff around. But okay, all the uh, green edges, I'm gonna here 
filet in the no, here there, filet. And I have a one millimeter, right? And then let's try more. Two, three, four. And okay. So now I have my object done here. See this? Okay, now what we can do is we can save this here. Push the save button and call this uh, three tray GoPro. It's more a three GoPro tray, but that's fine. So save this. Then we can go here in the model, in the body, click on the body, then it selects the whole body. And then we go here to export this. Yeah. Uh, go to go.stl file, right? So STL is the file uh, our software needs, the uh, 3D printer software here. Yeah? This is the 3D printer software for my 3D printer. I drag now this file in here, this STL file we just made. The three, day, three tray GoPro body STL thing. Right there, and then we click on print. This is like printer specific. So depending on what 3D printer you have, uh, you got this here. So now this will print in four hours and eight minutes. And then we can see here layer one, the print, and then I can slowly drag it up. And then you see how the print will progress. It's gonna print it like this. Right, so there's our model in the 3D printer. That's how it's gonna look like. And the inside of it will look like this, right? And this is the printer settings, our slice parameters reset that we have in hex interior. Um, if we don't like this, we can change it to something else. But uh, that uh, oftentimes uh, causes uh, problems. So we have an infill of 15%. Uh, we can go a 3D infill and make this here just 10%. And then let's see how that goes. Yeah. Now it prints in three hours 40. So we say 15 uh, minutes by having a 3D infill. See, it's like different, right? Look at that. Looks different. And this is depends really on your 3D printer software. What a crazy structure it builds inside here to get this thing more stability. And that also determines of uh, how fast you can print this. Yeah, so this is how it goes. Uh, we would now send this to the printer. If the printer is on, you could do that. I ha don't have the printer turned on right now, but I have to do that. And uh, then you have to wait your four hours or three hours, three and a half, four hours there, three hours, 43 minutes for this part to be ready. And then you can use it and park your cameras.